Hi everybody, welcome back to Spurverse, my scale model universe. And here we are back on the bench with a brand new build. And this week I thought I'd try something a little different. I've been trying to sort of change it up a little bit here for, for, my, for my own enjoyment. And also try to bring you some, uh, some eclectic and interesting builds. So we're sort of a little all over the map. Um, today I'm going to uh, build or start building uh, this uh, Maschinenkrieger from um, Hasegawa Hobby Kits. Uh, these are not cheap. Um, I think this runs about $100, this particular one. There's several in the series. and um, But th they're pretty cool. And we can weather the crap out of this. And that excites me. It's an unusual vehicle. I love space vehicles. And uh, Hasegawa makes some really good models. So I'm really expecting the, the detail and the quality of this to be pretty good. Uh, I'm praying that fits pretty good. Sometimes that can be a little wonky with these, these kits. I've built a couple in the past and have not had super, super uh, success uh, with, with perfect fits, but we're, we're going we're gonna to do our darndest. Anyway, this particular kit um, is referred to as the Lunar Tactical Reconnaissance Machine, the LUM-168, the camel. Um, I suppose it does look like a bit of a camel. Now, um, I thought it might be interesting to, uh, uh, to, to sort of try to um, build something that um, I, I, I think re requires a, a, a tremendous amount of <laughs> imagination, right? But they look, they look pretty cool. And so this, this is something that, that could potentially be a Wonderfest 23 uh, contender. I don't know. We'll find out. You'll be the judge after we've put this together. And uh, I'm noticing on this box that it says it's the 30th anniversary of uh, these kits, putting these kits out. And um, <clears throat> of the, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure uh, if they've been building these for 30 years or, but but it's 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 you know it's it's well packaged i mean it gives you that kind of almost like a world war ii feel to me but they claim uh in their story narrative for this vehicle that it's um from the year from the year 2883 i kid you not here let me see if i can get you closer to this uh yeah see june 15th 2083 and uh they uh, apparently, according to the, the narrative, um, fighting machines started arriving and uh, these tactical machines were, were sort of part of that fighting group. And this is clearly uh, for uh, moving around on, on another planet. So anyway, let's, um, let's uh, take a look, see what we've got here. Um, <clears throat> now... Uh, I think that these these kits um, should be should be pretty clean. Yeah. So um, let me just start to uh, unveil some of this stuff here, and let's take a look at, at what we're dealing with. Um, beautifully nice packaging. Um, looks like some things. Uh, I think it's just an additional uh, tree, uh, sprue tree in here. It's not, nothing has fallen out. It doesn't appear as though anything's fallen out. Yeah, it's just, uh, just another part of the, uh, that looks like the actual, um, uh, looks like the actual cockpit. Um, very nice. Uh, Relatively clean uh, scribing lines, so that'll be fun for paneling. We can do that. Uh, really nice kind of feel. Interesting kind of bulbous look here. Uh, looks like this is the interior of the cockpit, so uh, we can play with that. Lot, lots of uh, stuff there to, to, to sort of pick out and dry brush and, and, and give it some, some girth. 
uh, nice details on here, some hatches and things of that nature. So that's kind of fun. Uh, this bag, it looks like uh, they've just gone ahead and shoved every, <laughs> everything in this bag. So let's pull these trees out and take a look. Uh, looks like the legs. Looks like the legs look pretty good. I don't see anything uh, super problematic. Um, I don't see any flash whatsoever. Absolutely, absolutely clean. Um, it's a couple of really tiny little, uh, I think these are right here. They look like uh, they might be well, they are. They look like they're bolts of some kind, so that's okay. Um, one of the geniuses of things like this is symmet symmetry, right? So they can go ahead and just uh, duplicate them, uh, and you get a you, you get a second leg. So that's good for them. They they like that, and from an engineering perspective, um, this rear. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a, a fuel tank of some kind or uh, avionics, I don't know, uh, but I know that's on the back. Um, noticing in some of the plastic, I'm noticing some, what, what I can only refer to as um, stress marks or some kind of imperfection in, in the plastic, perhaps when it heated and cooled it down in the injection process. But other than that, pretty clean. This is fun. Um, this sort of radiator part. I always love that sort of stuff. And then you've got uh, these gray parts, uh, which are most of the cockpit. A, um, an engine bell, looks like, and, and some other stuff. So that's pretty simple. Not a lot. The, uh, the glass dome is absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It's, it's slightly tinted, which is fun. Uh, it's not clear. Um, it's got a, it's got a, a little bit of a smoke to it, so that's kind of fun. Uh, we've got uh, your 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 typical sort of uh, Bandai uh, connector rods here, uh, rubber connector rods. So I like that. Uh, some actually, uh, let's open this up. It looks like real. Uh, I kid you not. Uh, real rubber rubber for hoses. How cool is that? It doesn't get any better than that. Um, yeah, it totally is. It's rubber. Uh, fantastic. My goodness, that is going to be awesome. And these right here are, yeah, they, they, they have this, this wonderful, um, well, of course, if I get my fat hand out the way, you can see it. They've got this wonderful um, ribbing, ribbing in them. Yeah, beautiful. Very nice. So that's fun. Um, we've got an, uh, an astronaut uh, in, the, in the seated position. And we've got, let's see here. These are always fun. I do appreciate the way they put these together. Lots of imagination went into this, and that's exciting to me. I, I, I do love kits where there's a, a sort of a lot of thought gone into it. Okay, so this card, uh, I, I presume it's sort of like a collector's card where you, um, you collect the, the uh, vehicle information cards. Um, this is the camel. It's all in Japanese, um, a little bit of English, um, perhaps some call outs for some of the engineering, but um, it's all in Japanese. So alas, we will not know what that is. And a decal sheet with some really fun decals on it that are sort of reminiscent of World War II. Um, so some skull and crossbones with some tools, some funky um, 
looks like spades and clubs on uh, half yellow moons and some other some uh, some ice like a like a funky snowman melting I'm not entirely sure I don't know if we'll use those or maybe we'll find something from one of our old you know the old archer stash that might be a little more fun I don't know um, and then the final thing in this bag is a very thin piece of wire here and that's obviously for the antenna at the top of this uh, machine and some more hosage here just a bag of hoses and somewhere down here somewhere is oh yes oh yes our instruction booklet so there you go we have an instruction booklet um, put this behind me and let us take a quick look at this before we dive in this is not an unboxing video and I've already spent 11 minutes going through the, the kit but it's fun right that's, that's part of the fun of this okay it definitely has a lot of hosage um, we're gonna start with um, looks like the armatures for the legs we're gonna start building the legs it's all about the legs and then there are some hoses to go on but um, I'm I'm thinking perhaps we can build this up um, quite a bit before we have to start painting because that would be really helpful if we don't have to start painting every piece um, you've got some hoses for inside the cockpit um, that looks relatively straightforward and then um, it wants very specific order to the cockpit assembly the body as they're calling it so they've got a very specific sort of assembly order and that's okay um, yeah so uh, this tank has a, uh, a hose that has to be connected to it before we seal that up which is a bit of a pain I'm not sure we'll take a look at that because obviously I don't know what the seam line repair is going to be on that and uh, that is about it um, oh um, the uh, the pilot looks relatively simple so we'll we'll have some fun putting him together um, now the only issue I see here and I don't know if it's going to be an issue or not is he has to be scrunched into this cockpit into this seat and it looks like it's a very very wonky tight fit I'm always very suspicious of those because they make it look simple on the on the instructions and it is not simple it's not simple at all so we're going to begin with the leg with the leg assembly here and there's going to be uh, two of these so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start assembling this stuff uh, just so that you don't watch me fumbling <laughs> on how to put pieces of plastic together um, so we'll start the assembly process I won't get too far along we'll come back and we'll see where we are after we get some of this uh, put together and um, we'll, we'll see how well we're doing in terms of fit but um, I, I think this should move along pretty quickly hopefully this is all going to be about uh, uh, weathering and um, uh, a little bit of paint and detail but I think it's going to be fun and then of course in terms of uh, colors um, you know my sense of it is paint the bloody thing however you want there's no call outs for paint by the way so um, at least not in English that I can see anywhere um, no oh hang on I lie we do have some call outs here um let's see uh black gray light gray field gray burnt iron 
sail color, flat black, middle stone, and yellow. All right, some colors. Uh, we'll see what we can figure out. We certainly can't um, from the uh, the box art is not. not <laughs> It's not going to help you, but I suspect a lot of that is probably just the cockpit details and stuff like that. Okay, let us put some arms together and um, see where we are. Back for a little process, because as I was uh, sort of playing around here and, and, and trying to learn how this all goes together, uh, I thought it was uh, w worth um, diving in here. Uh, <clears throat> so it's interesting. The process is very much like putting a Gundam together, if you've ever done that. Uh, and there, there definitely is a, um, you know, they're definitely very clean, uh, these pieces. Uh, they're, they're going together quite well. I had one small issue that I'll share with you. Uh, it's not going to be a, not going to be a massive problem, but, uh, these, these little, doodads which are couplers the, they're they're made of a of a, a very sort of um sort of soft plastic i guess i guess that's what they are they're an extruded plastic with almost like a rubbery feel to them and they are used obviously for articulating the legs and uh interestingly enough in this in these units here there are two there's one that um, you, you place in the, the cylinder here uh, that uh, allows you to uh, have this ex ex piece extruded right here or ex uh, sticking out. And then the other piece, uh, which was the problematic piece, goes in this side. And the fit is super, super snug. So snug, in fact, that I cracked it. See, the other one isn't cracked. There was so much pressure uh, on on it, it just pulled it just pulled it. Now I don't think that's going to be an issue because I think it's going to be hidden. It's uh, it, 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 we'll see, but I, I don't think I'm going to have an issue with it. And then um, <clears throat> I went ahead and I started building uh, what is part of the leg panel here. And um, again, um, some. So just a little bit of cleanup. I'm using, um, you know, just a little uh, sandpaper here on these two parts. Um, and we should be able to just take off these little, the, these little toes, uh, I call them. You know, they're, they're just the little, the little pieces, the little nobbles, um, the little knobs, uh, nodules, I should, should say. Boy, I, sometimes I have a really difficult time explaining what it is I'm explaining. I don't know, the head's working, but the mouth isn't. Well, maybe the mouth's working and the head isn't. Anyway, you get the idea. So um, anyway, these cleaned up quite nicely. Um, <clears throat> but in, you know, we're building two of everything, right? So I've got these two pieces here and then I've got this one and now I'm gonna build this one. But curiously, um, there is, a little bit of, of flash that has to be, well not flash, but where the, the piece is attached to the sprue tree, you've got this little, little nodule, but um, some of it I've been able to sand off and some of it doesn't want to sand off. Um, but it is coming off. Okay, that's pretty good. And I'm going to be doing some weathering to this and some, you know, beating it up a little bit. So I'm not overly concerned, but these are unsightly. You want to get rid of them for sure. Um, Okay. That's pretty good. 
And then uh, the way this works, the engineering of this is, is, is quite clever, actually. Um, <clears throat> so, oops, I see a little bit of a nodule there. There. So the way this works is you want to line these pins up like this. These will get glued together, and I'm using the Tamiya Extra Thin. And then um, it wants you to essentially uh, push this, this rubber piece down over it. Now, um, I, am, I don't know if it's overkill here, but I'm removing the nodules from the ends of these rubber connectors only because I think fit matters. And some of the engineering of these things are so darn precise that if you don't do this correctly, um, it just it just causes you grief later. So um, I'm hoping that I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Okay, good. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I had screwed that one up. But you can see what this essentially does is it holds the two pieces together. It's very clever. And then once that is on. Um, it's sort of pressure fitted together and then you've got this little cap that sits over it and completes the the circle like that. Um, very clever. Very clever. So then all I've got to do is give this a little bit of glueage. And uh, this is the bit where, you know, I just get putting a little, little bit on this and then just putting a little clamp on this for a few seconds just to kind of have that bite and then continuing on. There. So we'll give that a few seconds. And so that gives us all of these parts and um, that completes that completes um, one, and now I'm on to two here, and so I've got all these little doodads that need to go on here. So um, we'll start putting these doodads on. Um, Make sure this is oriented the right way. And we can start to put these on D25. I do appreciate the fact that everything that you need is on the same tree. You're not going through 50 trees for, for, for the parts that you, you need. I do appreciate that. So I just need Sometimes I get carried away and I remove something that is actually a locator pen. And sometimes it requires the great Lou Del Meso to send me an email going, hey, why don't you remove the, uh, the sprue, <laughs> the tree, the piece of tree. Why don't you do that? I go, oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's why we have gurus in our lives, teachers, people to help us. Okay. So, this one looks like what's going on there. 
you can see these are clipping in. They're not requiring any glue. It's really pretty wild. And then um, 29 and 32. It's pretty good. And just make sure that this is all clean. goes through here. I'm all fingers and thumbs, isn't it? That's, uh, I don't know how you guys are with this stuff, but I am always like this. Always. Definitely um, glad I showed you this because this is clipping on, really pre pressure fitting and uh, not requiring, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize, not requiring any glue. And then, um, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to carry on and attach all of these pieces. But I wanted to, um, I just wanted to show you how these are pressure fitting together. It's really, it's, it's really enjoyable and fun. So uh, let me uh, carry on uh, getting all these pieces together because it's just, I'm just in the interest of time. I want to just show you more and, and, and not, uh, not get bogged down in, in, in a little bit of assembly. But anyway, I thought it was fun to show you because I'm impressed at, at how well these are uh, fitting together. So we'll, uh, we'll carry on. Okay, this is fun. <clears throat> and I thought I wanted to uh, share this with you because there are certain elements of, of this build that I think are worth taking a, a closer look at. Um, you know, it's interesting. I'm finding this build to be a little part worky. Uh, so if you've ever done part work models, you know, and it's also, a, a, it's very Bandai Gundam. Uh, lots of articulation and it's quite clever. Uh, so I've put this one together um, and it has quite a lot of articulation. Um, so it, you know, you're going to be able to sort of pose it. But I'm one of those guys who just, I don't play with my models. So we'll pose it and find a place for it. But I thought it was fun to show you the, the level of articulation. And then there's, there's this element here. So they've gone to a lot of, uh, a lot of trouble to really create some interesting mechanics. Um, but one of the things that I think it's worth paying attention to if you're going to build this kit is first of all, there is a right and a wrong and a left and a right. So you always have to be careful of that for sure. 
But the other thing I wanted to tell you is, is you know, some of the parts, um, and, and I sort of want to show you this here. It's very interesting. So they have a tendency, because of the fit and the pressure, these areas have a tendency to want to push away. What I'm recommending you do is get yourself one of these small, quick grips. Um, they come in all different shapes, shapes and sizes, but you can use this to clamp down on this and really squeeze this together. Now I've glued the joints um, where, uh, where, where I thought it was necessary. Um, and so I've, I've, done, I've done that and uh, that has helped tremendously. But uh, because of the fit and because of how tight these little gaskets are um, that hold everything together, it really is uh, it really is worth coming in and just giving this a good squeeze um, and just kind of making sure everything seats nicely. And it does and it will. And it's very helpful because without the uh, without the aid of this this clamp or grip, I've got two versions of it. Here's another version. Uh, they come in all kinds of versions. Ironically enough, this one seems to have a lot a lot more power to it and it's a cheap it's a cheaper go figure i know they're all different but i thought that was worth sharing with you um and then sort of making sure that when you go to uh fit these these pieces together like i'm doing on on this piece here you can see uh there is a right way and a wrong way uh to sort of seat these um but as you as you go to sort of push these down, you will, you, you'll hear a little click um, and you, you, you sort of feel it all coming together. You make sure it's all, all together the way you want it. And then you got to come in here with this gripper and, and kind of help yourself get it all squeezed together. You'll feel it click uh, and then you're okay. And you can, you can do the same on the other side just to give you um, some added strength and that should all seat nicely. Now, you do, you, you do have to be careful here because you see the, there's so much pressure on these, on these units that you got to get some glue in there. So what I've been doing is just getting a little clamp and getting some of my Tamiya Extra Thin and just along those seams, let that go in there and, and hold. Um, and you can do, do it along the bottom here, just, you're avoiding, you're not going to get it anywhere near the, uh, the, um, you're not going to get it anywhere near the articulation, but you want to get it, you want to get it just in that, that groove and, uh, and try to, try to clamp that together and just let that, just let that sit for a little bit. Uh, this one wants to misbehave, so I can see myself just putting that clamp on there like that, and we'll get a little more glue in there, and just let just leave, just leave that alone, and uh, the net result is <coughs> you'll get one of these. Um, now, curiously enough, I think once I understand just exactly how this is going to pose itself. Uh, I, I, I'm then, I'm not going to be afraid of, of hitting this with some primer and, and, and getting a coat of paint on it because I know that it's not going to leave that position for me. I'm not interested in it as a toy. Um, and I'm not interested in imposing it. You know, I'm going to find the right position for it for me, and then I'm going to leave it. Um, but I'm, 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 uh, I'm very happy, very happy with it. Um, it's it's engineered quite well. And um, I've started to put the feet together here. And they've co they're coming together quite well. And what I'm really liking is, is, you know, all the various different nooks and crannies that we're going to be able to get some washes in and, and uh, get, some, uh, get some detail in and some dry brushing. So we're going to have a lot of fun putting this together. I'm, I'm not too, uh, too concerned about... <laughs> Color matching. I just want to have fun with it, and I think that's the most important thing here. I mean, this is a real, it's a, it, it, it's a real, it's 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 a fun project. It really is. 
Um, it's got a little engineering to it. It's got great articulation. It's going to go in there quite well, or like all things, you know, when you're dealing with these, um, and if any of you have built a Gundams or have played with some of the Bandai kits, you'll know about these quite well. And uh, for the most part, you know, they go together quite well, but these, these edges here, you know, they pressure fit into, into, into the parts of the model. Now, in the past, I've made the tragic mistake of trying to sand those down or loosen them up or maybe even take a little, you know, tr just trim them a little bit. Don't do it. Get yourself some clamps and, and pressure fit everything. You, you'll be a lot happier and, you know, you, you, won't, you won't have that issue. Even though I said, uh, and I will, uh, pose it into the position it, I want it to be in, um, you don't want to be fighting it. And so uh, let the articulation work for you in that case. So um, we've managed to get these arms together. And uh, now it wants us to go <coughs> to, um, well, we've, we've, we've done all of this. And now we're in stage eight. And that wants us just to put some Grableys on here, which are going to hide these articulation points. So we can get those on. And uh, it, should, it should start to look pretty good. And then um, when, what we'll do is, is, I think at that point, we'll try to figure out what the, po the, the, the posing positions are. Because as you can see, we've got some hoses we have to put on here. And I'm not sure whether I want to, if I can do those later, I want to. Um, I don't want to have to do it now and, 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 and risk getting any, getting any paint on those. As I, as I look forward, um, I can see that we're going into um, what's called the burner nozzle. So it's part of the body assembly. So that's all go going on next. Um, and then uh, we, we really will be into the body because the feet will be done. So um, I want to uh, plow ahead here um, and, and, and get these Grableys on. Um, looking to see, again, they're all on the same, they're all on the same uh, tree and I really appreciate that. Um, so I'm looking down here. Here they are. I want, just want to show you one here because... Um, again, um, they come off easily, very easily, um, and lots of opportunity to get some washes in there and, and really go to town on this. It's going to be great fun. And uh, these pieces um, are, are uh, I'm just looking here, sorry. So this is what happens when you get, yeah, so they, they'll, just, they'll, they'll just sit over these, these caps like this. And um, as long as you just, you glue down the outer edge of this and you stay away from the inside, you know, it hides the articulation point quite beautifully and you're off to the races. So very nice, very clean, uh, very, um, very simple and um, quite frankly, uh, a lot of fun. So l let me get all of these uh, uh, beauty plates on. <laughs> Creebleys, whatever you want to call them. I'm pretty terrible with uh, name and nomenclature, and I have to apologize. I, I'm going to try to get better because um, it's not cool. We should, uh, you should know the nomenclature of these things. We're building models that have engineering, and you know, if it's especially if it's real science, you, you, you really want to know because that's a big part of the fun of, of, of why things are put together the way they are and why they're engineered the way they are, at least. At least I think it is. So there I am preaching about nomenclature and I go off and go thingamabob or whatever it is. <laughs> but anyway, you, you, I know you'll give me a break on that because uh, you, you guys are awesome. You always do. So anyway, okay. So let me get these, uh, these ready to go. And then we'll start looking how, at how they um, sit in the feet because that's going to dictate uh, how, how that all locks in so that I, I, I can actually uh, uh, get, get some primer on some of these parts. But I think we're doing pretty good. <clears throat> Guess what? We've made some progress. And uh, we're at a point now where I need to start 
putting some primer on things. So I'm really, I'm, I'm really happy that, uh, you know, I went along, plodded along. I've discovered a couple of things. I've got some um, articulated arms here that uh, these that are are going to get hoses uh, in the t in the top there, and they're going to attach to these arms. Uh, it's it's pretty clever. So it's going to slide on here. And then it's going to slide on there like such. And then there's actually going to be hosage that's going to come out of there and go into the top here. And so uh, once I realized that I was at this point, um, I got as many of the gray bleeds and things on as I possibly could because everything is, is symmetrical at this point. And uh, so I realized that I, I'm at a point now where I need to get some primer on things. And curiously too, um, I can start to get some primer on this body. Um, now, uh, I'm going to be using a, uh, probably the, um, uh, <clears throat> I would say, uh, probably a Mr. Surfacer. Uh, just because uh, I, I really want, I want some nice, uh, uh, some bite to this. I'm going to stay in the, uh, I think I'm going to probably most likely stay in the Tamiya world. Um, not sure. But uh, I'm going to just have an awful lot of fun uh, dirtying this thing up. Why not? I mean, you know, let's really... Uh, Go to town on it um, now because it's going to have a basically a, a, a sort of white gray that's my famous tamiya insignia um, which is a really fun paint to, to paint spaceships with uh, it's a, it, it reacts you know it's it works with enamels really well and um, i have a i have just a super easy time putting on uh, any washes onto it, um, it just it just it just loves wash. I don't know. It's it's one of the few paints that 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 I find in that line of uh, to me um, that 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 does. So uh, very friendly, and it's a great color for spaceships. It's a great base color. So this is going to get my famous insignia. Now um, I'm going to be probably most likely using Tamiya, but. Uh, there is an insignia that is made by uh, Vallejo Air makes one too. Uh, it is, I find it to be a little darker. It's a little grayer, but it works just as well. Um, so if you have that in your arsenal, try that. Um, and then, of course, you're going to have to hit it with uh, a couple of, coats of varnish just very light coats let it let it let it dry and then you'll be off to the races but um, you can start to see this is coming together quite quite fast um, so once once we've got some a coat of paint on this now um, the thing of it is is because we've got some elements that need to go inside of this I, I'm going to paint these two halves I believe I think I'm going to paint these two halves um, and then um, go from there. We've got a couple of uh, interesting things that are going to work in our favor. One is we've got um, a, a, an element that's going to jump across here and that, so it's going to hide this, this seam quite well. Um, I've got a little bit of cleaning up to do uh, on this, uh, but I think... If I can, um, if it'll behave itself and cooperate, um, let me find the, the pins. There we go. Um, just obviously try to avoid that hideous step, but I've got just a little bit of cleanup to do here. But I think if that's tight enough, and it appears to be, I've got a grid line here and I've got a grid line there. So I think, and this is going to be hidden. So I think our friends over at Hasegawa have really thrown us uh, a bone and a thought about where these seams go. I think that's, that's correct. So um, big, 
big thank you for that. Uh, it's always nice when, um, you know, the design of something like this um, takes, uh, takes into consideration uh, how you can hide scenes on a, on a model. It just makes for a much, a much cleaner, uh, much a, a, a much cleaner finish. I think it does anyway. I'm just I just noticed got these little there. Okay, so um, time to get a coat of paint on everything. So let me prime everything, and um, I think um, what what we'll do is we'll get it all primed. And then we'll do um, a little sub assembly just to kind of determine where the feet are going to sit. Um, and then uh, I think we'll call it we'll call it a day. I think we will. We'll see. Um, we'll, we'll 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 see how how we're doing. But um, great fun, great fun. Really enjoying it. Um, it's it's been a pleasure to work with. Let's power on. <laughs> This is fun. This is fun. I am having a blast. Now, as I sit here and uh, share these comments with you, I'm about um, four or five hours from the previous moment. And um, <clears throat> this is day three. And uh, I'm... I, I'm just absolutely bowled over by this kit. Uh, it, it, it's really a lot of fun. Uh, not not just the all of the uh, articulation um, that that we've got because um, we've got a lot. All of this wonderful articulation where you uh, you can see the, uh, the 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 sort of the the armature of this moving up and down you can see right here where this this all sort of is very very posable and uh i i i just love that i just love that so um we're going to get this in the right position and essentially uh what we have which is actually quite fun the engineering of this is quite fun uh these these feet, it will connect to these feet like this. I don't want to push these on because they're pressure fitted, but I wanted to show you that will fit in there like that. And um, see if I can get you a little closer. That's going to fit in there like this uh, with one of these pressure hooks. And so that'll go in and lock in. And then there's some rubber hosage that's going to come out of these two holes here. I've got hoses that are going to come out of this appendage and they're going to come round to the rod that we, uh, we showed you uh, in the previous segment, this piece here. Um, and then there's going to be a hose that comes out of that. Now, these hoses, uh, these hoses are, are rubber. They're real rubber. And uh, they've got this, this, this wonderful um, uh, um, sort of spiny feeling on it uh, with a cap, with a real cap. Um, and that's going to go to this tank here. Now I've glued this tank together and I'm working on the seams. And then what I'll do is, is now the instructions want you to put this in and then connect the two. But there's absolutely no reason why you can't just push this through with a toothpick and, and you'll be ready to go. Uh, I'm trying to keep all of these hoses as clean as possible of, for obvious reasons. Um, and um, while you're at it, I've been working on my... Uh, my driver in his spacesuit, and he has a has a helmet like such. Well, he has a head and a helmet, and the helmet will go over like that. And he's got quite a bit of detail. So, um, I say <laughs> because I am just my enthusiasm is starting to grow. Uh, I'm going to like this. I don't know how quite yet. But I'm going to light it. Um, I'm going to get a light inside the helmet, and uh, I'm going to try and get a couple of lights inside uh, this this cockpit. Now, this isn't the cockpit. This is uh, this is the rear of of the piece, and uh, you'll never see it. 
the, the cockpit c goes in front of it. Now, you, there'll be an edge here, but this is one of those classic examples of the stuff you don't see. But I don't care. I've been dry brushing it and I'm going to add a few more details um, and I'm going to add, add, add some hoses uh, that hopefully you, what you might see. I don't know. Now, there is a collar here, this collar, and it's got these, these, um, these openings here, four hoses to go inside. Um, so it is possible that we might be able to see, might be able to see um, something. I don't know. But it's one of those classic examples of it's weird. Sometimes I really care and sometimes I don't. Here's the engine bell. And um, I have been uh, picking out some of the, the moments there. There's some gunmetal on it. Um, and of course, it articulates beautifully, absolutely beautifully. And it has, um, which I'm, uh, is actually, I've painted it and it's drying. It has a, um, I guess, a burn plate that, that, that comes up here that uh, essentially protects the rear of the, uh, the rear of this piece uh, from getting any flash or you know burning um, but we're going to have a lot of fun picking that out um, as we will the side thrusters um, but this is essentially the body of the piece and then you've got the, the 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 top of this which sits in there like that now this is why i have decided i think i can i, I think i can light this because I can still get wires in here quite easily, run them through here and into the cockpit. And then it's just a little, um, you know, I'll, I'll just plug this into a little nine volt battery on, on my stand. So I am pretty happy with that. I, I, I think this is going to work really well. Um, lots of, lots of detail. The washes are going to really uh, pick out a lot of this detail. Now, um, I've got a seam here. Painfully obvious, I've got a seam here, and I have a seam here, and I have a seam on the back. Now, curiously, as I mentioned earlier, our dear friends over at Hasegawa have just filled this whole top full of GAC. Now, I'm, I'm currently in the process of painting a rack here. There is uh, a couple of tanks and uh, what appears to be a radar or a communications fin that goes on the back of that. So I've just got a little bit here that I'm going to have to putty and sand. I think everything else is, has disappeared. And this at, at, at the bottom here is, 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 is sort of a natural kind of panel line. So I'm, I'm kind of digging that and I think we're going to be okay uh, because it, it joins this panel line beautifully. Uh, now I might scribe these out a little bit just to clean them out. Uh, but um, it will connect beautifully to that. And so what you, you, you can really see this now, can't you? Uh, here are the, you know, here are the legs. Uh, they go on like, sort of like this, uh, like this, to uh, the backwards feet, like this. Uh, let me try a different angle here that, so I can get my stupid hand out of the way, because this is all being done with smoke and mirrors right now. But that kind of looks like that. Kind of looks like that. Pretty cool. It's, it's a really very unusual, very interesting uh, machine. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy with it. I, I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's, it's a really unique design. And, and um, with all of the hoses and, and there's a little antenna for it, it, it it's really going to pop. Um, and I think I've got a stand for this that might be kind of cool, really give it that kind of hardware feel. So I'm actually excited about a stand. <laughs> I'm excited about getting a little light in here um, and, and really plowing ahead with this. It is going to be a bummer that I'm going to lose all of this, uh, this beautiful uh, in interior, but you know, that, that's the way that works. Cause this is really kind of cool. Um, now I, d I don't know if the cockpit is, um, dismantleable. That's a big word or not. I don't know. But, um, 
anyway, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So, um, and then the only other thing I wanted to share with you is here's the cockpit itself. Now, um, I think I'm going to do this in, um, well, I'm going to hit it with some matte black to, to prime it. Uh, pick everything out. I'm going to then hit it with, um, I think I'm going to actually hit it with uh, Vallejo's Insignia White because it's, it's a little more gray than the Insignia White from the outside. But I think it all makes, it'll all make sense. So I'll get all those shadows in there from the matte black and then I'll get the white inside and then I'll start to pick this out with some coppers and uh, some, some aluminums. And, and maybe a little bit of color, perhaps a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow, because I've got, I've got um, uh, well, definitely an opportunity here uh, to, to do something with the aluminum and uh, perhaps even with the, uh, the gears themselves. And there's some other little parts here. There's a, there's a really fun kind of uh, computer part here, dial here. Um, and then there are some other gaskets and hoses. Um, and then, of course, there's the seat itself, which you're not going to see a lot of because our dear friend sits, crouches right in, in, inside of it. So it completely disappears, completely pointless to do anything for that seat. Uh, so I might just hit that with some black. I'm not even going to bother to do anything with it because sadly you won't see it unless we don't use him. Uh, we can certainly not use him. And if we don't use him, then we light the cockpit and we do not light his helmet. But I don't know, I think we need to put a guy in there, light his helmet, and just go a little crazy. We could even put a little blinky. <laughs> I, now I've got one from Evan's Design, make a little uh, SMD, a little, a little nano chip that I can actually put here, and I can actually put um, a little bit of Steino Res over that, um, and, and, and that could flash. So uh, we could definitely get some action going in this cockpit. I don't know, uh, which could definitely extend this beyond a, a, a second hour to a third hour. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I have to tell you, I am super, super excited about this, uh, this kit. So um, if you are just joining or you've skimmed ahead <laughs> to see if there's a finished model, welcome. Uh, please like and subscribe. It means an awful lot to me. And for those folks, uh, we are building the Machina Krieger Camel. The L, uh, what is it? The LUM-168 Tactical, Lunar Tactical Reconnaissance Machine. That's what we're building. Very cool. It's very cool. This is a fun kit. I mean, all of a sudden, I don't know, out of nowhere, I'm, I'm, I'm turning into some kind of a review. <laughs> it's like a review, but it isn't. It's just my genuine passion and enthusiasm for this kit. So much fun. Um, and I guess the reason why I'm saying that is because it was very crisp. Now, there are, uh, uh, you know, some of these, uh, some, of, some of the directions instructions you do have to look at a little harder. Now, if you're someone like me um, who is challenged in so many different ways, I, I'm very visual, so I have to look at it. I, I could read something a thousand times and I, I, and I wouldn't get it. But bless their hearts, this is completely in, in Japanese, so you're not going to get anywhere there. Uh, but it is, it's, it's, obvi it's pretty obvious how it all goes together, except there's a few things that I'm not sure about. But I don't care because it's going together really well and they've really thought this through. This is definitely one of those, uh, one of those uh, fun kits, you know, uh, c coming off of that M MAV that, 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 uh, from Martian uh, that really, it, it hurt my head. This is just an absolute dream to play with and I can see so many opportunities to, 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 to have some fun with this. So. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to plow on, and uh, in part two, uh, we shall uh, start to get this assembled uh, and start to look at color and shade and uh, just exactly how we're going to, to what we're going to do to it. I think we're definitely before we do the final construction is get some of these panels picked out in some darker colors and then of course uh, soften it way back. 
Um, I think we will, uh, because that'll really, really, really help. And then obviously, I think we might even play with some chipping um, and some weathering, because I, 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 I don't know, I just want to go to town on it. It's just so much fun. So there you go. Um, this, uh, th th this concludes this uh, part one of this build. Um, thank you for joining me. As always, I wish all of you, please be well, be safe, build something, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.